Hoe is de mens geëvolueerd? Wat onderscheidt ons van dieren? Het zijn vragen die binnen onze evolutionaire geschiedenis nog steeds niet beantwoord zijn. Hoogleraar biologische antropologie Richard Wrangham meent deze antwoorden gevonden te hebben. De eerste mens is geëvolueerd toen hij leerde koken. Cooking gave us huge amounts of energy and it also enormously softened our food. And so uh, once we cooked, uh, our species was able to uh, have the energy to travel a long way. Uh, it was able to eat sufficiently soft food that we could spend only one hour a day chewing compared to about six hours a day if we were uh, eating our food raw like great apes do. And one of the great things that cooking did was that it enabled our guts to become small. And because it, we have small guts, we can uh, shift energy that would otherwise be used to maintaining the gut to another organ. And the organ is the brain. Cooking gave us big brains. The biological evidence tells us that cooking began 1.9 million years ago with the evolution of the first species that had our body form, which was Homo erectus. Homo erectus had a, a body like ours in the sense of being the same size as us, but also it had a, a flat stomach, uh, so it had a small total intestines, and the only way you could have those small intestines is if you've already discovered cooking. Once you start thinking about the importance of cooking and fire, then you realize that humans can't deal without it, and it's just hugely important for our biology. I think the reason that people have been a little bit um, uh, focused on other aspects of evolution is because cooking and the use of fire always seems like a cultural innovation that doesn't have any direct connection with our biology. And uh, once you realize that we cannot survive biologically without access to cooked food, you realize that this particular cultural innovation was incorporated into our biology. So it's not that it was invented by humans. It was invented by pre-humans and made us human. And that is our new way of thinking about it that challenges the archaeological evidence. Because the archaeological evidence is that the use of fire was more recent than 1.9 million years ago, that it began maybe half a million years ago. Well, the trouble is that it's very difficult to find evidence of the control of fire in the past because you can go and make a fire in the woods nowadays and a month later you won't find any evidence. It goes very quickly. So we have to use the biology to understand this and, and now we can use archaeology perhaps to go and test this idea directly. Naast de biologische aanpassingen van ons lichaam heeft het leren koken volgens Wrangham nog een andere belangrijke ontwikkeling teweeggebracht. Well, we certainly know if that uh, from all animal studies that the distribution of the food has a radical impact on their social relationships. And in the case of cooking, it changes the distribution of our food in this way that once you cook, you have to bring the food to a certain place and let it sit for an hour or two hours, however long it takes to cook while you're preparing it before you eat it. That means that there is a, a nice chunk of food that is um, desirable to eat that is waiting for others uh, to possibly steal. So you have to have social rules to prevent this. And so here we see, I think, the beginnings of the sexual division of labor. Once you have cooking, then you have gender roles forced on them by the need for this social system of uh, controlling access to the precious food. And out of that sexual division of labor, of the woman does the cooking and uh, the man protects her socially, then you have all of the other sexual divisions of labor following, of um, uh, women doing so much in the women's role and men doing things in, in their role. Wil je meer weten? Bestel dan nu Koken over de oorsprong van de mens van Richard Wrangham.